Now, let us move on to the second important topic of this lecture, which is principal component analysis or in short, PCA. First, let's understand geometric intuition behind what the PCA does and then we will move on. Okay. So let's say if we have a data set which is given in the data set here which has two dimensions x1 and x2 and we have number of data points which are given by what you see here, right? So you can see we have plotted a number of data points in here. Now if I take a relook at this data point from a different viewpoint and what I mean by that is in this, right, we have, you know, basically the axis system, the origin is somewhere here, the axis systems are basically, the x1 is in this direction, the x2 is in this direction, but if we change the viewpoint, and if you look at this data point from a slightly different perspective, for example, if I change the axis and the location of the axis in a such a way, where we have this u axis and a v axis which is perpendicular to u, and we locate the data points in these two axes, we can see several distinguishing features. First thing is, if you look into this data set, right, the most variance, the values in the data is along the U axis, right? So this is essentially uh, the most probably, uh, the, you know, the principal direction in which the data is varying, right? So if you look into this, the U axis, you know, this is essentially the principal direction in which data varies. Okay. Now if you look into the V, right, that is the second, second most important direction in which data varies, right? Those are the two different, you know, units that the data varies, right? So what we can do is if we have, you know, a method which basically takes this information, okay, and maybe projects this data point into a different set of axes where the axes are located probably at the mean center of the data. So, so if you have these two axes, and let's say this location in U and V, this is the origin, so or in this coordinate, this is the zero, zero, and this location of this UV is at the mean of data. If that is the case, what we can do is, if there was a possible way to use this information, what we can do is we can project this data, okay, into this space. Okay, the space that is given here. And what we are doing here, we are taking the data which was there in X1 and X2 axis, and now we are projecting that data set into two different axes, U and V, where U is the direction where the data is varying the most, and you know, V is the second most important direction where the data is varying, right? So what we can do, and what are the things that we observe in this, right, is first, if you look into this data set, right, the x1 and x2 values seems to be correlated based as x1 is increasing, x2 is also increasing, right? So there is a, some correlation that you can see. So if you, you know, take this, this, in, your, in this system, what is going to happen if you take a covariance of x1 and x2, that is going to be high, okay? Because data x1 is correlated with the x2. Whereas if you take a covariance, of u and v in this frame, right, this covariance is going to be zero because you know they are not correlated as x is in, u is increasing that does not necessarily lead to increase in the value of v. So the covariance is not high there, right. So what we have done is we have transformed this data from x1, x2 to a u and v axis that we have. And PCA is a technique that enables this transformation. Okay? And U and V, U and V that you see, U and V are called 
principal components. Okay. So as I mentioned, you know, if there was a possible way to do this, where we can take this and transform this here, where there's a covariance or the correlationship between the different axes are as minimal as possible, it turns out we have a method and PCA essentially allows us to do that, okay? So this is a in, uh, geometric intuition behind what PCA does. It takes the data set, which might be an original space, and it transforms that into another space where there is a lower correlationship between the data points that are there, or different features or different uh, variables, the correlationship between the variables itself is minimized, and that's the primary, uh, you know, um, primary motive of applying principal component analysis, and geometrically, this is the simplest way to understand what PCA does, right? So let's move on, and let's talk about what are the other important aspects that you can see in this, right? So what we have done, maybe we have taken the original space, we have transformed this using a PCA, and we have now this U and V dimension that we have. Some of the other things that we can do is the primary direction in which the data varies is essentially the U axis, okay? This is the primary direction where the varying. There is not much variation in the V axis that is happening. In the V axis, the coordinate of data are very close to zero, right? And maybe there are because there might be some experimental noise. So let's say if you're collecting this information or data points from some sensors where you're computing two features, the V component might be because of the noisiness, noise that is there in the sensor through which you are collecting the data that is there, right? So now what we can do is like we can take this information and use this information to preview, represent this overall data set, not necessarily by two features, U and V, by one feature, because you know the second feature might not be important. And what we do in that regard is we take this X, V, right? This is the, it will have two coordinates, U and V coordinates. What we will do, we will say that, you know, V probably is because of noise, so we will not, you know, take the V coordinate and we will project, you know, this on the V axis and whatever the value of points on the V axis, those are the going to be the only things, right? So what we can do is essentially now we can represent a data where we have only U data, U axis and all the data points are lying on this U axis itself, okay? So when we are doing this, what we have done? Two things. We have taken a data which was in X1 and X2 with you know, different space, we brought that into U and V, which is a different space. And from this space, what we did, we reduced and eliminated one of the, you know, axes or one of the uh, coordinates that is used to, that is needed to represent a data. We eliminated that because that might be because of noise, it's not contributing significantly. And from there, we can now come to a method where in order to represent all data data points that we have, instead of needing two axes, we can represent that data by a single axis, right? And so this idea where now we move from, you know, this two dimension, X1 and X2, and then we basically came and are able to represent this data only in U axis, right? So this were the data points probably here, but through PCA we got to, you know, UV, right? direction and from UV we basically neglected the V component and we got to U component. This process is essentially what you can do with PCA that will help you in dimensionality reduction. Now we have given a simple example where you have like two dimensional variable uh, previously and we converted that and reduced the dimension to a single variable but you can have a very high dimensional space let's say thousands of variables for in the in input feature in the first space, and you can reduce that to a only 100 dimensional space in the after PCA, and that might lead to a significant dimensional idea reduction because the data in the lower space, as we talked about, could have very, very significant uh, advantages compared to the data in the high dimensional space, right? So this process of taking high dimensional space and reducing the dimensionality is one of the primary application domain of principal component analysis that we are going to be doing. So we will take this geometric intuition and see how can we actually implement computationally the principal component analysis and what are the steps that are needed for us to implement principal component analysis computationally.